Hey all, welcome back. We're going to be playing with a bunch of stuff that's new at Sephora. This is actually going to be a rare first impressions moment for me on a lot of these things. I have the new Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Moisture Repair Balm Serum. I'm really hoping that this does everything that it promises today because my skin is a wreck. I have two new things from Patrick Ta. I have the Double Take Cream Powder Blush, which I've had before, but these are new shades. This is in Not Too Much, something that I have never been accused of. And I also got one of the new lip glosses. Y'all know I am lip gloss rich at the moment, so we might use this. We might use one of the new Lawless ones. We might use one of the new Tower 28 ones. There's a lot of new lip stuff at Sephora right now, but this is an option. And I also picked up two of the Glossier Cloud Paint Bronzers. I got Dune and Sail. There's like a big part of me that just wanted to do that. Like a big part of me that just wanted to do that. I figure with the Danessa Myricks, the yummy skin, we're gonna go ahead and use some more Danessa Myricks products today just to see how they go together and we will kind of wing it with the rest of it. But I'm gonna try and focus on things that are available at Sephora just to stay on theme. Just for some semblance of organization because most of my videos are pure chaos. So let's go ahead and jump in. Roll up my sleeves here. Oh, baby girl. There is so much riding on you today. So the yummy skin moisture repair balm serum. Moisture Moisturizing and repairing balm serum for face and body, they claim. We're just going to attempt to use this on my face today. I will not demonstrate it on my body. Ugh, I'm feral. I'm feral. This is gonna be a weird video, I can tell. Okay, Danessa. Not that I doubt her. This is the component. I realize on a first impression, most people really want to see like what the opening of the... Uh, try that again. Like the unboxing experience and what it looks like. So, so there she is. Has a little paddle. Let's use the paddle. It's heavy, but I think it's just the product inside. I don't think that there's like artificial weighting or anything. And it looks like citronella, which, you know, I expected. No scent. We love to see it because the last Inessa Myricks complexion release, mm, two complexion releases ago, I feel like everyone was pretty unanimous in the like, why did you make it smell so strong of Tutti Fruity? And so other things since then have been unscented, which makes me happy. Ooh, nice. That's what the 4K is for. I actually ordered a new lens too. So maybe things will be improving soon. I want to just do a little more wide angle. When I upgraded my camera, none of my old lenses fit. The only one that I had was this really short lens. So my camera's super far away from me and I don't like the aspect ratio. So I had to go to some experts in the field and ask what I should do about that. I ended up ordering a $600 lens the other day. So hopefully it works out. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Oh. Oh, Danessa. Now, did I already have a little concealer on from this morning? Yeah, because it's how I keep myself from picking, like first thing in the morning is instead of picking whatever's on my face, I just stick a little concealer on it. So I keep a concealer in the drawer in my bathroom downstairs. The reason that I'm breaking out right here, here, and here is retinol. So it's like, it almost helps just to know why. It's actually just because my skin's in a purge moment. Like I have pimples in my eyebrows. I mean, first world problems, but still a little annoying, bit sad in it. Okay, so that is very balmy, very serum-y. Feels a lot like something that you would slug with. So we'll see how it works as a base for makeup, but I'm gonna just take a little extra pains here in rubbing it in. I'm not gonna try and like make my skin all red because I do turn red really easily, but part of me really wants to make sure that the makeup goes on evenly. And the other part of me just thinks that this feels really nice. <laughs> feels really nice. It doesn't feel super silicone-y. It doesn't feel like one of her other like yummy skin balm powders that they have that like upsolite thing going on. It might have upsolite in it, but it's not giving that. It's not giving that kind of like silicone-y lighter than air slip. It's much more of like a traditional petrolatum kind of feeling. So I'm hoping that it's just a bunch of really nice healthy waxes and things like that because your girl needs that. I hate winter. I officially hate real winter. Get me out of here. <laughs> like, I want to go back to the sunshine. I want to go back to no seasons. I am sorry to all of my Northeast people who were like, one of us, one of us. I, I hate it. Winter is so mean and I hate it. And I don't think that I can do it anymore. Anyway, we're going to now go in with the Danessa Myers Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint, which is one of my favorite products of last year. And I haven't used it since and I want to, especially because it's something that I constantly cite as 
the skin tint for when you're having a bad skin day because it gives a really great believable skin finish but it just has a fair bit more coverage than a lot of other skin tints it's just a little more generous a little bit more forgiving in that sense so starting in with that this is in shade two it is also a phenomenal shade match for me which helps a lot because then you don't have to worry about making sure you seal the edges on everything my skin is quite dark right now because i am using a retinol and it is pushing all of my pigmentation to the surface before it peels so my skin is going to peel soon but first what it looks like is everything rushing to the surface and i turned my skin like i said a little bit red by rubbing in that yummy skin product Ooh, i also already love this skin tint, but I have to admit, I mean, we'll see how other things go on top of it. If it's like too, too, too moisturizing, dewy, hydrating, but the finish on that first product that I put on from Janessa Myricks is delightful. Like, do I think that it is for people with oily skin? No, that's literally not the point. Like she made that mattifying water powder serum. Is that what it's called? That came out at the exact same time as this because I feel like they serve very different purposes. One for each kind of extreme on the skin type spectrum. So I did not buy that one because I, I don't need oil control. I was actually in the city over the weekend and idiot me only packed like powder products and I just ended up wearing like no makeup pretty much the whole time because my skin just could not abide a powder face of makeup. It didn't matter how much finishing spray I put on. No, 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 no. It's creams all the way right now. We are in the home stretch of the dead of winter and my skin is just absolutely done. I mean, it is done with me. I did look at the weather though today and oh my God, with the exception of like one day this week, we are out of the thirties. Thank God, like it's getting up into like the sixties this week. Like I am so happy. Like that just says survival to me. There are a few of my friends, like almost everybody up here in the Northeast, like experiences seasonal depression to some extent. The only person I know who doesn't is like Kiki. Like Kiki's just like, this is where I belong. I should have been in New York the whole time kind of thing. But like me and Nicolette, mm, yeah. We're both from Florida. We experience it so, I mean, she's from not Long Island, but her family lives in Florida. And I just feel like we both are just like Florida girls at heart. It's just so hard for us. Like it's just, when you ask us how we're doing in the winter, it's like, it's winter. I'm doing bad. <laughs> I'm doing poorly. <laughs> All right, yeah, we have a zit. We have another zit and we have another zit. Let's see what we can use to cover those. Let's go Tower 28 to see what we get out of it. So this is the Tower 28 Swipe Concealer in CC. Do, 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 do. What a good shade match. What a good shade match. Oh, I love this stuff. I love it, I love it, I love it. We had so many concealers come out last year and even more coming out now that just really blew my mind. Last year was a year that just changed my world on concealers because that was when the Givenchy came out. And like, I like don't wanna give myself too many snaps, but I feel like I have been doing this for long enough, reviewing makeup specifically. I don't call myself any kind of professional makeup artist, but as far as knowing whether I like something, knowing whether something is good, when I get a first impression on something that blows my mind, it tends to stick. I tend to have strong instincts, like I've kind of sharpened those feelings, those instincts that I get, like the tingles that I get from a good product right when I use it. There have been a handful of products like that where it's just like, I knew it as soon as I used it and I never looked back. And the Givenchy Prism Libre Concealer was like that. And honestly, that freaking Skin by Kim palette, that one did it. And this, this concealer also, this is just a phenomenal concealer formula. I love it. It's so good for so many different skin types. I just love it. And it's $22. Mm, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It's just seamless. I also just think that Tower 28, whoever they have on hand, who is helping them with their shade ranges, because they don't do the most as far as like, they're not trying to be Gucci out here with like 50 shades of something. I don't know necessarily if they have the budget for that, but whoever is doing their shade ranges is dialing them in as real skin tones. And I think that when we had Fenty come out initially and just like threw down the gauntlet with the Pro Filter foundation and it was 40 shades and everybody was like, I've never seen anything like that. At least, at, you know, Sephora. That was when people started kind of, I mean, the same way that everything gets reduced, right? It's like when Morphe was coming out with tons of palettes, everybody just swatched things and talked about pigmentation and everybody started just equating pigmentation with quality, which is just not the case. The same thing happened with the shade ranges where a lot of people were like, the amount of shades equals quality of a shade range. And we have seen it time and 
and time and time again since. A, sometimes the shade ranges are just bananas in terms of whether or not they include certain people in their undertones and they can be really skewed in one direction, usually white, regardless of how many shades there are. And also we saw with like House Labs, they can be inclusive, but if they're not real skin tones, good freaking luck. I know a handful of people that will stand that foundation, but most people are like, what in the, like you can see a line of demarcation on everybody and it was just a confusing shade range to try and navigate. Oh my god. They tried to do the opposite thing where it's like if you are cool toned you need warm kind of thing. The thing that MAC does with theirs. But MAC has such a legacy of doing that that I feel like people are used to it. With House Labs people were like what is this? Like what do you mean I need warmth? What do I need it for? What am I trying to get? Are you just trying to neutralize my skin? Like no I just want it to match my skin. Stop trying to like counteract my undertones. Like that doesn't make sense. So anyway. <laughs> oh I just feel so much better now. <laughs> oh my god. I really hope that that doesn't cause my makeup to break up over the day. Like I hope that it's not too oily emollient. But I say this all the time. I don't always love the decisions that Danessa Myricks makes in terms of some of her colors, like her balm contour. Some of those colors are just straight up baby poop. And I have not always loved the longevity of some of her products, the way that the little flaky glitter gels like dry up in their container so quickly, no matter how tightly you close them, no matter you know how well you maintain them. But the woman knows texture, okay? Like she just understands how to manipulate texture and how to put really beautiful textures into her formulas. And that is what I trust her for so much. And I feel like, wow, 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 wow. This is one of those products that if it's going to wear for a while, can resurrect your skin in the morning, if that's what you need. My skin needed resurrection. My lips still need resurrection. Like I need to put something on them right now because the rest of my skin actually feels great all of a sudden. I have some cookiebutterbalm.com and the original formula from Glossier. Being disorganized, or as Ingrid and I call it, being an untethered cat, which means that you don't have any earth signs in your top three, translates into the system is that there is no system. And so sometimes it's just really exciting because you find things like a cookiebutterbomb.com in a jacket pocket. And it's just fun like that, you know? So let's rejuvenate my lips a little bit with that. And let's, speaking of Glossier, start in with the bronzer cloud paints. Okay, I'm gonna swatch these. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. <laughs> Ooh, I've used a cloud paint in so long. This is nostalgic. And then Dune. Dune 2. Dune 2 is coming out. My friend actually saw it on Early Access last night and he's like a big, big fan. And he was like, they skipped a couple of things. And like, you know, there were some tropes that they had to carry through from like the first one. But like overall, it was amazing. And I can't wait to see it again. You know. Either way, this looks like every bronzer that I love lately. It looks like Thrive, thr hello. It looks like Thrive Mo. It looks like Mojave from Persona. Okay, it's even a little cooler and a little bit less saturated or just fairer than Mojave. So I love it. I'm gonna see how that goes. If you're unfamiliar with the cloud paints, they are one of the more beautiful formulas out there on the market. They've been around for ages and ages and they do tend to be pretty pigmented, but easy to manipulate. You can apply them with your fingers. Like that was really originally how they were designed to be used. And they do, unlike most things that are like fingers oriented, blush, lightweight, no makeup, makeup kind of application product, they actually dry down all the way, which is really cool. So they're pretty long wearing. So there is Dune. Nope. There is Sale versus nothing. What do we think? I think that that's quite lovely. I think that we also might end up going in with the other one. It's very sheer and it's very, very fair, which I love because it's reminding me a lot of, like I said, something like Mo or Mojave, which just, it gives me something to offer people who are very, very, very fair and even very cool toned skin tone because we are all, at least in my generation and older, scarred from the way that you used to go to the drugstore and buy makeup and there was only like one shade of bronzer and it was like, girl, your only option is orange. And this is just so nuanced. It's like a weighted blanket in terms of comfort when you're so afraid of things going orange on you. <laughs> like this won't go orange on you. So beautiful. Honestly, that color is so beautiful. And as much as I made a big deal out of the fact that like you can get really carried away with these really quickly because the pigmentation tends to be so high, even for a product like this, no, no, they dialed it in on this. I feel like there's just less pigment load to the suspension. It goes on super, super easily. I am immediately impressed. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. And also, you know, it's everything working together. It might be 
too, that the Dunessa Myricks, that balm that I put on first, is making everything go on a little bit more hydrated looking, which just speaks volumes for it, but that's why it's a first impression. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, that looks just so nice. So nice. Huh. So should we try and use Dune? I mean, it's just makeup, right? Like, I want to see if it's like too orange. I'm going to use just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Let's just see. She's pretty! Okay, 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 okay. Well, this is exactly what I said was going to happen when I talked about buying these. I was like, maybe I'm gonna be extra like I usually am and use two shades of bronzer because I like to create a natural, believable looking gradient. I mean, when I pack, I usually pack four bronzers to begin with. Are we surprised? No. But these layer really beautifully. And again, I just feel like they, maybe I'm misremembering because I just feel like some of the colors in the original cloud paint, it was like they went on and you all of a sudden they were just running away from you and either these have been decreased in their pigment load and they just have a little bit more of like a gel finish to them or the colors are so dialed in that they just feel seamless regardless of how much I put on so it could be kind of equal parts both I'm not sure I'm not sure but I love that so much I picked this up actually it's interesting the owner of the account makeup on your radar loves to message me when new things come out which I cannot say enough about like how much I appreciate that. Here's the component. Already has a fingerprint on it because I have makeup on my hands, but that's what a lot of people drives people nuts about these components is that they never look clean. But either way, she messaged me this. I assume it's a girl. I'm actually not sure. I don't know who owns that account. Could someone, I, I should probably just message them. Either way, they messaged me all these new ones and I was like, those are new. Are we sure? But like once I saw it on the website, I was like, okay, that's a really beautiful, subtle light pink and I'm stoked. Like I'm just really stoked to see how this looks. I also enjoyed this formula a lot when I bought the original ones because this is a lot more pigmented than the original kind of, I think they were called velvet blushes. And the idea here is that actually you use the powder and then the cream and then the cream is supposed to bring everything back to a skin finish. And at the time, that was very revolutionary. We do it a lot now, which speaks to the fact that Patrick Ta is an influential person in the makeup space. And he literally changed the way we thought about makeup with this product. So I have a lot of respect for it. So she is a very, very pretty kind of nuanced color. I feel like that's what he did this time was come up with a bunch of shades that are like the second release from Wayne Goss where everything was just really subtle. And it was just like a matter of like the undertones being slightly different, but it was all supposed to be just really, really soft. I'm into it. I'm into this as a concept. Touch into that. I am prepared, even though it is a light color for it to be a pigmented formula because that is what I experienced with the last ones. Yes, 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 it is. I'm gonna make sure I wipe my brush off in between because I am going to try and minimize hard panning, but much like I expected, the formula is the same. It's definitely packing a punch in terms of actual pigment. The only objection I have to something that has that much pigment to it is just that it's kind of like when you're using iodized salt versus diamond crystal salt. Not every bite gets the same amount of salt on it when you're using iodized salt because it's so much saltier and you don't want to use as much, whereas diamond crystal salt, you can just kind of spread it more evenly. The same way that something with a little lower pigment like the Chanel Chanel, the new Chanel blush, is going to go on everywhere and build more slowly versus something like this where it's like you just have to be a little more careful and it might end up being a little patchier if you're not. Patch, patchy top. Anyway, <laughs> what is wrong with me? I'm going to now go in with the cream. I should swatch these for y'all because what I like about these combos is that they're not the exact same color. He does that really well. They're really similar, but they complement each other. So as you can see, the cream is much lower pigment. It's much more of just a texture and it's a tiny bit cooler, which I think is interesting. I don't know if that's the direction I would have gone, but we'll see how it works. I'm going to go sponge on this because I don't want to disturb what's underneath, especially because I have that Janessa Myrick stuff under there and I'm concerned that it might make things slippier. But let me just tell you, if you have uber, uber, uber dry skin, I think, and I, I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead here, but I feel like the Janessa Myricks is soaks in. It's like the layer that you need between you and your makeup this time of year to compensate for the fact that your face is going to try and absorb every single molecule of moisture from anything you put on it after that. And so it's like, it gives it something to chew on while you put the rest of your makeup on. <laughs> it's like, thank you. Going in with the cream. And again, this one's, I mean, you don't have to be as careful with it because it's mostly a texture, not a lot of pigment. 
Isn't that pretty? But especially for people like me who always end up applying blush twice kind of thing, it's just a fantastic little combo because it's like the next layer is always gonna be a little more subtle. Now we do have socket happening and that's because I haven't powdered, I haven't done any of my typical bronzer routine. So we're seeing a lot of reflection. The only powder that I have on my face right now is that first layer of blush and then we put the cream on top. So we're just all sort of one texture right now. And I think that that's the next thing that we need to alleviate before we go in with anything else. So let's do that. So this is my typical routine. We're gonna go in with the Kosa's Cloud Set, just tippity touch, pulls the shine down without over mattifying, but we're quite still kind of cool tone contrasty between the cool toned bronzer, relatively, the cool toned blush, relatively, it's pretty neutral, and then no real like warmth underneath my eyes or anything, and so that's going to be alleviated by just a little bit of like filling in the gaps. And I always fill in the gaps with the Victoria Beckham bronzer in the lightest shade here, and that's just going to help bridge that without looking too sockety. I can't stop looking at my skin texture because of that Danessa Myricks. Like even though I'm broken out, you can see my zits through it and everything like the texture, regardless, the rest of my skin looks so healthy. It looks so healthy. And so like, I just got a drink of water everywhere. Oh, it feels so nice. It might be soaking up that powder a little bit, but that is a risk I'm willing to take. I mean, there's only so much that you can expect, right? In terms of technology, if your skin needs major, major, major tenacious hydration, you're just gonna have to be a little more careful with powder products on top of it because it's going to soak up unless you wanted to wait like two hours before you put your powder on. She's cute, cute. I'm gonna put on a little contour. <laughs> that song stuck in my head so bad now, Glossier. Charlotte Tilbury, film star bronze and glow. Very, very subtle here. This is a look that is just a bunch of like washes, right? A very, very skin native color. Just adding dimension, but not a lot of really large decisions have been made. It's just very natural looking. Love that for me. Love that for me. Love that for us. I don't know what I'm gonna do on my eyes. Ooh, actually this is a really good moment for this. So this is the Couture Mini Clutch in 200 from YSL. Don't these colors look like they're gonna go perfectly with this color story? Let's do it. All right, this is a very intuitive palette. While there are a lot of options in terms of, you know, not using every single color, if you do choose to use every single color, you're gonna get a certain look every time. I'm not gonna use every color. I'm gonna stay again in the more like subtle tones. I'm not gonna go all the way towards this pink. We're just gonna use, oops, hello. Not gonna use this kind of darker pink. We're gonna use all three of those. Build a nice little crease gradient here. This one's got equal parts practicality and fun because that little glitter in there is really pretty. It's like really spangly and a little bit adventurous. It's got a little bit of like a, like a multi-chrome to it. Like it has a little bit of a shift. I'm grabbing that on a little stubby brush. This is the BK207. Just going kind of right in the lower lash line. Not trying to be too vaguely threatening today with our, you know, pink leaning eyeshadow. I just want a little bit of shadow there. Grabbing a 211, a little bit smaller. I'm going in with that brown. You don't need much of this. Build a nice little crease moment, a little false crease moment. This is super, super straightforward. I'm sorry if this is boring, but I just feel like it's gonna go so beautifully with the rest of what's on my skin. And I just don't wanna overpower it. I just wanna show the performance of the makeup today. This is such like a healthy looking everyday makeup, but I feel like if you had this whole thing just as your capsule, you could just mindlessly put this on every morning and it would just look really, really like natural and at home. And then I'll just take the gold-ish, that champagne sparkle, just kind of go all over my lid, like that. A little bit up here on my brow bone. This is easy makeup to like. I'm gonna use a little more of the first shade, the pink, so that my whole eyelid isn't very, very bright. I kind of want to have a little bit more of a transition. Yeah. And I'll actually just take a little bit more of the sparkly and put it underneath my eyes as well. Boom, 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 like there, you know. Well, fun, well, fun moment. All right, I think it's eyeliner, mascara, and brows time, which, you know, this is turning out to be a pretty boring look, like in the best way possible. I think that we will go with tiramisu from 
Sephora, then I'm gonna go with my Thrive mascara, my regular brow stuff, and then we'll be back, and then we will be back, I do, we will be back, we will be back, and I will swatch a bunch of lip colors and we'll make some decisions. This is like new everyday makeup. My new everyday makeup, your new everyday makeup. It's so chill and subtle, isn't it? I mean, obviously not everybody has my skin tone, but Patrick Todd did put out a fair amount of these new blushes in kind of different versions of this subtle set of tones. I just think that this is just, it's just lovely. It's just lovely. We'll do my brows with the clear real quick. All right, all right, all right. Let's swatch a whole bunch of lip products and make a decision. All right. So. First we have the little like balm stick, essentially from Lawless in Whisper. Super beautiful, don't love the scent on this. It's just giving kind of Bonnie Bell in like a not nostalgic way, but I do still wanna try it, it's really pretty. Then we have George in the Forget the Filler. That's what this one is right here. And these first three are really like the same color almost, just in like different saturation values and different formulas. The next one is the new Patrick Ta in Obviously. Ah, uh, she's really pretty, I'm not gonna lie. And then the next one is Nudie from the same Forget the Filler lip gloss. I just bought that. Then we have House Labs Coco, which you all saw me apply a couple videos ago. So I wanted to do that for comparison's sake, but I'm not gonna put it on today. And then the last one, I don't know if this is a new shade. My sister gave this to me. I don't think it's new, but this is Bliss from, yeah, no, I don't think this is new. This is the Ami Cole lip gloss, and it's just another absolutely beautiful color and an absolutely beautiful formula. But I don't think that it's new, and y'all know that I love the Ami Cole formula already. So we're gonna take that out. We're gonna take Coco out, because you already saw it. Oh, and I'm gonna take out Nudie because she's too pink for this look. So we're really basically deciding between three of the same color. I wanna see what obviously looks like and if it's too much, then we'll dial it back. How's that? Now, a lot of people did not love this Patrick Ta formula when it first came out. I love it. I think it's a fantastic plumping formula that doesn't turn my lips red and people really didn't love the smell. I think it smells like when you walk into Michael's <laughs> during the holidays and you smell those like cinnamon pine cones. That's what it smells like. Yeah, it's too much. This is a little too much for this look, in my opinion. It also, this is the major volume plumping gloss. It feels different from my other original one. Like, I guess because they increased the pigment load in it, it doesn't feel as syrupy. I would rather it feel a little more syrupy, like a perfecting kind of gloss feeling where it fills in all of the little gaps, like the Forget the Filler does, which I love so much. Pretty color, really feel like it does go with this look, but it's like, maybe it's not too much. Hmm. Hmm. I also love that you can start to feel kind of the like minty spicy tingle. I wanna try the other ones and just see. Cause the main thing that I'm interested in here is what Whisper looks like. I have not tried this yet. And this is such a beautiful color, but again, it might be like too cool to something for this. That's really pretty. And it's also plumping. And while I don't love the scent, there are plenty of lip products that I don't love the scent on. And this one's super subtle. All right, Annie. Okay, Annie. Like, I am really enjoying the fact that, yes, these are all formulas that have been out for a while, all these lip formulas, well, except for the House Labs, but everybody seems to have finally gotten the memo that we want things that are weird. We want things that are subtle. We want things that are desaturated and grungy. Like, that's a beautiful desaturated, grungy kind of beige, like a mauvey beige. It really has so little actual pigment to it. it. Reminds me a lot of the LH Cosmetics ones, but the LH Cosmetics ones are not plumping and I'm starting to feel that little plumping moment. None of these is a spicy plump. I wanted to make sure of that because I am very anti-spicy plump. Gucci. I do want a lip liner. I want like a little bit of a lip liner. We're gonna go with the Sochi because I enjoy it so much because that Lawless is almost lighter than my lip color. So just a little bit of defining on the edges. We might even go in with a little bit of the Rabanne, a little lip contour moment here. Love it. Love it, love it. And you know what? You know what? You know what? I might just take a little bit of George, because it's the same freaking color, and just touch it right in the middle. Am I totty? 
Is that what just happened? Tati's always putting on like five lip products at once. I'm just having fun, okay? I'm enjoying myself. Everybody watching this right now who's like actually been on my channel for a while, they're like, really, Kagi? Really? Every look you've ever done? Cool, great. You know what? You know what? I get excited about subtle colors. I get excited about when something is dialed in because my eye is so trained for undertone that all of these being so unified in undertone makes my whole day, <laughs> makes me so happy. I can't stop looking at myself on my monitor because it's just like so satisfying. It all looks so at home on my skin. And unlike, you know, when I find usually like some holy grail of like one color and one formula, all of these are new. And I feel like every line that these came from has something for everyone. The blush, the lips, the, I don't know about the, y, I mean, the YSL one probably does. You know, the quad that I used. I really feel like they've all focused their energy around creating these really subtle tones for a lot of skin tones. So it's not just me that it's including, which is really nice. Plus, you know, the complexion product, this is a Danessa Myers product, which means it's a fantastic shade range. So where is my regular Fix Plus? I, my Fix Plus Magic Radiance is like dunzo, but I have so many backups of regular Fix Plus. Hang on. This one's also almost empty, but that's okay. She's that girl. I haven't been using the regular Fix Plus lately and Magic Radiance doesn't smell the same. <sighs> the smell of original Mac Fix Plus is just so iconic. I love it. Oh, if you can't tell, it's one of those videos where I'm excited about boring stuff. But this is truly like everyday makeup upgrade. Instant love on so many of these because the colors are so dialed in and their formulas that I already knew that I loved. So let's begin at the beginning on final Thoughts. Danessa, Myrix Moisture Repair Balm Serum. Holy crap. This is like instant holy grail status the way that my skin is so happy right now. I do wonder if it's going to be a Chanel Sublimage Le Temps kind of thing where when I get to summer, I'm like, this is way too much, but that's fine. Fewer steps is always fine with me, but I do feel like I could use less and get a lighter weight effect. I think that this is something that could be really adaptable any time of year, but if you're that person who wakes up in the morning and you're like, how am I gonna do it today? Cause your skin is just so dry. If you know, you know, this is how you're gonna do it today, <laughs> okay? My skin was gnarly before I put this on and it really has made all the difference and it feels lovely. It feels really, really nice right now. Like my whole face of makeup just feels like it's not cracking. Mm, look at the skin, the skin is skinning. Patrick Ta has really come out and done it with at least this shade. That's what we're talking about today. A lot of these formulas with the exception of that Janessa Myers, I already know the formula, but the shade is just outstanding. Like what a great shade. I really, really like it. I think it's beautiful. And again, careful because the powders are a little bit more pigmented than you might expect them to be, but I feel like everything can be evened out with the cream because the cream is so subtle. So I love the way that that ended up. And this is definitely staying out in terms of like top shelf territory right now, because I love that it's something that I just don't have. Like I just don't have something that's this desaturated of like a peachy pink with this like slightly rosier little touch. It's, it's just really, really nice. And it's truly, not too much. This whole look is not too much. Oh, I'm back on cloud paint. Wow, wow, this was lovely. And again, I don't know if it's necessarily as like bouncy gel texture as it was today because the skin prep was so good, but these went on so beautifully and the colors are phenomenal. They're just so pretty. I love to see it. I love to see bronzers come out in these subtle shades. And I hope that the rest of the shade range translates that well to the rest of you know the world in terms of skin tones, but these are gorgeous. These are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Like so pleased. Ooh, the plumping is plumping. I can see it. I don't feel it, but I can see it, which is nice. All these lip products are great. They're just great. I, I really, really like them. The forget the filler, I already knew that I liked. The color on this, Whisper. I love that Lawless is putting out real life swatches that look like the actual color. That's so frustrating. When the swatches online don't, it's just not what you end up getting in your hands. This is exactly as subtle and grungy and desaturated as it appeared to be in the swatch. And that's so satisfying. Like that's just 
so nice. Thank you, Lawless, for putting out realistic swatches that actually look like the color that you end up getting in your hand, because this is a really beautiful color. And as much as I feel like the YSL quad that I used today has been a little bit different in terms of the undertone of the shades, because I'm like, oh, it's kind of mauve -y. So when I do really warm looks or really cool looks, it doesn't quite go. This is the color story that it goes with, is just this really, really neutral skin native look. And I am extremely pleased to the point that like, okay, underneath my videos, I will not just link the products, but Shop My Shelf allows me to put a link where it's like you can go to a shoppable page of everything that's in there. And you can like see the pictures of everything. And I highly encourage doing that specifically with this video because this is a capsule. The way that all these colors go together is a capsule of your new daily makeup, your new everyday makeup. Like this is like a kit. And I didn't mean it to be like that, but it very unintentionally became this like starter kit of like subtle everyday makeup in this really, really neutral palette. So I love when we stumble into things like this. I find it exciting because this is just so freaking easy to wear. It would go with everything. And the formulas are phenomenal. And my skin looks great. Like it almost gives me peace of mind. It like lowers my base heart rate knowing that this Danessa Myricks product exists. Because I'm like, oh, one fewer thing to worry about in the morning, you know? <laughs> My skin can look like skin regardless of its condition. That makes me really happy. All right, well, I hope you'll enjoy this. I hope that my excitement isn't too over the top because it is sincere. And I, I know that I'm being excited about really, really like subtle things right now, but how beautiful, just how beautiful. Anyway, if y'all enjoyed this, please do give the video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that if you're new here. Welcome, hi. Hello, you made it all the way to the end of the video. I'm Khaki. We talk a lot about color theory. We talk a lot about luxury beauty. You can tell I get very, very passionate about the subtleties between different makeup items. I have an encyclopedic collection and I'm constantly swatching things so that we can compare, so that you can make more educated buying decisions with whatever your next beauty budget dollar is. And the result, hopefully, is that we always find the best version of every product essentially, like whatever you're going for, we're gonna try and find the best version of it that makes it easy and fun. So if that sounds good to you, subscribe while you're here. I love y'all, all of my current subscribers, obviously. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.